everybody. Welcome back to Screen Heroes episode 120. I am Derek, one of your regular hosts. I only have one of my other regular hosts with me this week, and that is Ray. Hi. Ray, do you want to introduce our two guests? Well, I mean, they're returning. Like, we have Chris and we have Nicole, and I'm so happy that we do, because I love them. We love you. We love you, too. (laughs) La, la, la. (laughs) Yeah, so Ryan, our third normal host, regular wonderful host, lovely host, whatever I normally say, um, could not be here this evening, so we are subbing him in for two other people. Um, And we're going to be talking about The Incredibles 2. We'll be reviewing that after we talk some news. So where do you want to start on news? Okay, so why don't you start with all your Star Trek stuff? Because there is a lot that hit the internet today. All the Star Trek there stuff. There is a lot. So okay, okay. That's fine. So baffling. So Star Trek Discoveries had a little bit of, uh, of a rocky history and a rocky season two production season so far. Uh, so two of the showrunners have been... Uh, let go or have left or have been fired however you want to believe that happens um, and Alex Kurtzman who's been with the show actually since day one he was the first person officially signed on to the series uh, is taking over as the sole showrunner instead of three showrunners so there's a lot of headlines saying that they've replaced showrunners or they've swapped out showrunners none of that's really true they just got rid of two of the three and kept the one um, Which is fine. The two who got let go, there have been a lot of reports from the writers and the cast and crew that those two had been kind of aggressive and abusive on set and difficult to work with. So assuming that's all true, then this is for the best, but I guess we'll never necessarily know. Um, And then today they announced that Alex Kurtzman and his production team got a five-year contract or Star Trek stuff. And now there's tons of articles all over the internet talking stuff. about what that is. Yes. <laughs> so Technical term. Just stuff. That's what it says in the contract. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> basically, Kurtzman and his team have been assigned to uh, continue to develop and expand Star Trek for CBS. This is not Paramount, so this means no movies on the big screen. This means CBS stuff. Um, it did include things like spinoffs, miniseries, TV movies, cartoons, which as a fan of the animated series is kind of exciting for me, and as a comic book fan, that's kind of cool too. Um, There's a ton of rumors swirling around that one of those shows may or may not be the one Nicholas Meyer was supposed to be working on, and may or may not include Patrick Stewart returning, because of a very offhanded comment he made. (laughs) Uh, they, They had interviewed him and asked him if he had watched Discovery yet, and he said no, but he might have a reason to watch it soon. Oh. Oh, okay. No. Meaning that... <laughs> he was just taking a vacation and not anything else. <laughs> right. It probably meant that, like, you know, yeah, I'm going to sign up for CBS All Access, so I might as well watch it. Or it could mean that, yeah, I'm coming back to Star Trek. I'm going to lean towards the early end of that spectrum. But, um, but yeah, so. Anyway, oh, Ryan's in chat. The old Pork Chop Express. Hey, Ryan. Um... <laughs> So, anyway. what a name. Five... Yeah. <laughs> it's five, a big handle. Five days ago, uh, Entertainment Weekly dropped all these new Aquaman photos, which look amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and a new logo. Yeah. I'm digging the logo. Yeah? <laughs> it looks brighter and a little happier, which is probably a, a good thing for the DCEU at this point. It's yeah. a little too dark up to this point. So... <laughs> We got to see Mira's costume and Queen Alana's mm-hmm. costume and Black Manta and, and Ocean Master. Ocean Master. Yeah. I gotta say, Black like, Masters. everybody looks amazing, except why does Ocean Master have a man bun? Like, why was that <laughs> necessary? He's gotta fit his hair inside that goofy helmet somehow. <laughs> can, no one hair. can have a luscious yeah, mane like Jason off. Momoa, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm not big on fashion and hair trends, as people who are watching can tell, so I have no idea. Like, some guys can pull it off. I don't think so. Patrick Man Wilson buns should not. never be a thing. No? I hate Could I pull so it off? Much. I, I would wish you would pull it, it off. Um, well, like, if you, have you can figure out how to make it happen, 
I will support you. And, I then, just, and then immediately pull it off. I literally shaved my head like an hour ago, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, okay, Ryan uh, has requested a Shazam Gate 2019-2018. It should be 2019 because that's when the movie comes out. Um, but we've been talking. It's been Shazam yeah, Gate 2018. It has. Uh, uh, nothing nothing. happened. There's rumors that we'll see a teaser trailer at San Diego Comic-Con, which is where it's been confirmed we'll see the first Aquaman trailer. So that's a possibility. Other than that, no official poster, no official imagery of any kind. They're really focusing on Aquaman right now, which... And they uh, should be. That movie comes out next. Right. And, (laughs) I mean, to be fair, that's what Marvel did between uh, Black Panther and Infinity War for the most part. So, you know, you... Kind of go in order. Push, push, you know, the marketing for one before you start on the next. You don't want to start yeah. counting your chickens before they hatch. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry, Ryan. Ryan's very oh, excited for the Shazam God. trailer. All right. So, anyway, so moving on. Um, so, we do have some Pixar news that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Pete Doctor and Jennifer Lee are taking over for John Lester last year. Or maybe about six months ago even, uh, John Lester was forced to go on a hiatus for um, being inappropriate with female employees. And that kind of ran the gamut from touching to talking. And so, you know, screw him. But nobody, like, said that he was fired. They just said he was stepping away for a while. So... He is totally fired now. He has been replaced. (laughs) That's kind of a nice way of saying he stepped down to save face. Yeah. (laughs) Disney does not put up with that. But especially considering it's, you know, what their market is. It's children. Yeah. What kind of example would that set, you know? Horrible. Absolutely horrible one. Uh Uh-uh. I am excited, though, because Pete Doctor directed Up. That's my favorite Pixar movie. And a great one. Jennifer Lee was heavily involved in Frozen, and that movie that just one went... I don't care about. You no, know, but it was incredibly <laughs> popular, so she knows what she's doing. This and... is true. I don't know how it is. I was going to say, a lot of the is. Disney's current animation slots, like, they all tend to lean more towards, like, the Pixar formula now. They do. The animation style is definitely moving yeah. in that direction. Yeah. Like, especially with, like, Big Hero 6 and, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and uh, Wreck-It yeah. Ralph and whatnot. Like, all of those yeah. tend to be more Pixar's style of yeah. storytelling. And so well, they even I'm excited that. to see where that yeah. collaboration Well, they did leads the Planes to. movie. Yeah, I did not like that. Wait, what movie? Planes. It's like Cars. It's oh, planes. I forgot that thing. It's, it's like a Cars offshoot. Yeah. Well, no. it wasn't a Pixar film, which I think most people didn't notice when they went to go take their kids to that movie, because it looks like a Pixar yeah. movie. <laughs> but it is the same company, I guess, at the end of the day, right? So maybe we should just let it go. Really? <laughs> Any other news articles that we want to talk about? Uh, you said that The Runaway started filming today? Yeah, I just saw, saw an article like two seconds before we started the podcast that said that yeah. the, the Runaway season two season has begun two. filming. Oh, nice. And I don't know if anyone here has seen season one, but it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, um, I've heard really good things about it. Haven't had a chance to watch it yet. It does they, the comics pretty, pretty they good do, justice. They do a really good job. Like The things you want to see from the show they show you like one of my favorite parts of the whole show is the fact not to really spoil don't anything. spoil anything i'm not spoiling anything like but anything. like if you're a fan of dinosaurs you'll like the show just saying. that's a, that's really okay fine there's a velociraptor in the show come on i didn't mean for you to just say that i'm just <laughs> saying like there's way like that's not even a focus of no the show. but i mean you like just ruined runaways for somebody who just wanted to talk about the incredibles they just wanted yeah. <laughs> no no it's it's a very very good show I mean, if you've seen the it trailer, you, 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 yeah. The writing is done really well, mm-hmm. and so is pretty much keeping you on your toes, so you think you know what's going on, and then you don't know what's going on, unless you've read the comics, then you kind of do, but still. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm very excited for season two. Cool. Jessica Jones season three is starting production soon. Yep, and Luke Cage season two comes out this Friday. Woo! I also uh, saw another article saying that Amelia Clark has wrapped filming on the final season. Of yes. Game of Thrones. Yeah. At least she's the first of the principal like yeah. actor cast. It's a little sad, course. I guess. It is, but I mean, it's kind of interesting that like they're starting to wrap up filming. So. Yeah. Even though we won't get to see it for like a year. Too <laughs> <laughs> much. Um, okay. Well, then I guess we'll move on to yeah. 
our review. Um, before we do that, we are going to take a quick break. So just a moment. Hey guys, it's Derek of Red Shirts and Runabouts, the Heroes Podcast Network's dedicated Star Trek podcast series. Join us every Friday for new episodes covering everything from Star Trek Discovery all the way back to Star Trek the original series. We talk Star Trek news, review episodes, talk top lists like our favorite ships and characters, and we even pitch some of our own ideas like what we think a Quentin Tarantino Star Trek movie could look like. So don't miss an episode by subscribing today. Live long and prosper. All right, so we're back, and um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the Incredibles review. So before we dive into the spoiler details, we'll go around and give kind of a quick kind of one or two sentence non-spoiler take on how you felt about the movie, and then we'll talk about the box office and that kind of thing. Sounds good. So normally we start with Ryan, and since, Chris, you're sitting in Ryan's seat... I got some shoes to fill. You get to go first. Yeah. Um... I thought Incredibles was very, very good. Um, the The animation was spot on. the The action sequences were really engaging. Um, the story itself felt a little disjointed in places because this is a sequel, and and you know Brad Bird I think was trying to juggle several ideas at once, and not every single idea meshed well with each other, and there wasn't really no like overarching main like theme he was trying to drive. Um, but like other than that, I thought the film was incredibly entertaining, and um, there were some really good moments that that stood out. But we'll probably get into those later. So I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nicole, I also really enjoyed the film. I like the take that they uh, went with for it, as far as perspective. Um, I also liked some of the topics that they talked about that I don't think get enough representation in a lot of the animation styles of today, and Speaking of animation, again, yeah, it was really great. A lot of the detail were almost hyper-realistic. <laughs> um, some of the na- like nature settings were really, really, really intricate and really well done. Although, you know, the sequel took how long? Like 15 years? 12, yeah, something uh, like that? 14. 14 I'm, I'm terrible at math. 14 years to make. So I think that it definitely um, lived up to its hype. I wasn't disappointed. Ray? Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. It was a lot of fun. I I still, overall, prefer the first one. And I think that goes back to your comment. Mm-hmm. It, it was a tighter story. Mm-hmm. And I think the villain was a bit better developed. But this one had a nice bait and switch that I totally appreciated. And I, uh, I think it's one of Pixar's higher quality films. Cool. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I liked it a lot too. I think I might like it more than the first one, yeah. but we'll talk about that and get into the details before we get too spoilery. So this is your spoiler warning. We're going to be just talking about some box office numbers real quick before we dive into spoilers to give you a chance to pause and go see the movie and then come back. And based on how well it did, you're one of the few people who hasn't seen the movie yet, I guess. So, uh, we'll just wait for you to come back. Bye Ryan. And with that, Ryan is leaving because he didn't get a chance to watch the movie yet. <laughs> Ryan, it, for you. Goodbye. it made a lot of money. Um, all right, so in the box office, it did. It made uh, 100, over 182 million domestically in its opening weekend, uh, which has now broken 200 if you include Monday's numbers, um, which just dwarfs the original. The original only made 70 million in its opening weekend, uh, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy. Not a ton of competition. It had Ocean's 8 in its second week, um, and it had Tag in its first week and tag made like 14 million dollars i don't even know what that is it's um a movie about adults who play tag for an entire month out of the year with each other say it's based on an actual story it is true story uh, uh jeremy Ren- <laughs> jeremy renner's in it and he broke, really? he broke both of his arms in the movie. Uh, like in real life in real kid? life yeah he, he did his own what? stunts in the movie and he broke both of his arms what? what's his name from uh the the John Hamm, Jake Johnson. Thank you. Oh, Jake Johnson. Mm-hmm. Hannibal Burris is in there. How and have I never Ed heard Helms. this movie? I saw a trailer for it like a month ago and it looked it funny as hell. Well, that's um, our next double date, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> the movie really, like, it caught me off guard when I saw the trailer for it. I'm like, well, that looks amazing. And I usually don't like movies like that. Um, but I think it looks good. I think it looks uh, comparable to the first Hangover. Mm-hmm. So, Fair enough. Okay. It made just under $15 million and Ocean's 8 made just under $19 million, so not like a ton of competition. Um, 
But it's also a kids' movie, and it's a Pixar film, and it's a sequel, so no one's super surprised, I would imagine. It's been 14 years of anticipation for this movie, especially since the first movie, while not as big as a box office success, has garnered so much of a fan following that everyone's been pining for this movie. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. Um, So it actually became the, it was the number one grossing opening weekend G or PG film, Mm -hmm. um, which is pretty big, because that's a a lot of company. Yeah. so, you know, it did well. Uh, so th- those are the box office numbers. Nothing like super shocking or, or unique about that. So we'll, we'll go ahead and dive into things. Uh, where would you guys like to start? And this is now spoiler territory. So feel free to say whatever you want. So the movie picks up like 30 seconds after the first mm-hmm. movie ended. And I think I really want to rewatch both films just back to back. Like mm-hmm. yes. not even a break in between or you know, there were a few theaters go. who actually did that. Like they had like mm-hmm. a, a special where you could watch the first film and then the second movie would pick up immediately right after. after that one. So there was no break except for like the credits in between. But yeah, other than course. that, like some people did that. And uh, I've heard that like that experience seeing it in that manner was like really rewarding for some yeah. people. So I can believe I that. I think I'd be one of those people though. <laughs> well, it'd be like one of those things like watching Thor Ragnarok right into Infinity War. Like I think that'd be a little more jarring because you're jarring. super happy at one point and then you're super depressed. But, but people <laughs> were doing that when they were getting ready to go into it um, after their friends had told them that it pretty much picks up yeah. right after. Yeah. yeah. Even does. if the tone is completely different. Completely <laughs> off. <laughs> I, no, I going into too. it, I was not really excited about it taking place directly after the first one. I wanted there to be somewhat of a time jump. But you played the video game, and but they already I did covered, too. like, the Underminer in there. But yeah, that, that doesn't really why. But, like, the Underminer's plot in the video game is completely different than the movie, so the yes. video game has nothing to do with the sequel. No. <laughs> and, like, that, that, was, that really didn't have anything to do with it. It was more of just... It's been 14 years, so I've grown up. The characters kind of should have grown up. Like, we're Toy Story. Andy has grown right. up through the three Toy Story movies, right? Yeah, there, there's, like, age. between so. one and two, because one and two came out so close to each other, it's, it makes sense to have Andy still relatively the same age from one to two. But from, like, two to three... That's a huge jump. Yeah, that is years. a huge jump. So that yeah. one makes sense. Yeah. But, like, this, this, was, this, this was 14 is just like years. So. the next movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Brad Bird came up with a story, and it was... His story was better with Violet as a teenager and with Jack Jack still as a baby. So that's the story that we got. I'm Dashed sure. The adolescent. I'm brother. sure part of that, like 14 years, with them throwing a million ideas against the wall, because you could age them up and have a ton of fun stories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. and they still could. Yeah, exactly. So maybe this is like a reopening. Um, so it's not. It might not be just a standalone. Not that this movie shouldn't be a jumping off point I, I mean i'd love for it just to be a standalone movie right but it it does benefit from being a direct sequel to the last one as so close of a sequel to the last one but it also i think would have also benefited more had it been maybe set at least a year or two after the first film it's possible i mean yeah you can show that first adventure of the underminer thing it's like oh from this point onward we've grown up or something yeah. like that or but like to have the entire story set like days after the events of the last film it's it's good but it's also jarring at the same time i think it's a good move if they want to do more mm-hmm. because then it reestablishes who they are it also reminds people of kind of the past story and re- reintroduces the characters and now it's 12 or 14 years later and so they have also a brand new audience mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll be a little surprised if we get more though just because brad bird doesn't really do sequels i think this was his first sequel. he was he was hesitant Is to it? even do I this sequel because so. he was like he was like i feel the pressure now to please the audience with something that was supposed to be so original that it could stand on its own and now that people are demanding more he's like Oh no, I'm I'm under way more scrutiny with with this next film, basically. But that's also how today's, you know, how the audience is. They are yeah. always wanting two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so regurgitating ideas. I mean that it's a perfect opening for them to have a sequel like they did and reopen it. I'm not saying they should. I'm saying they can. I mean, with this money, maybe they'll just find a way to do it without Brad Bird, um, yeah. which I think would be probably not. It would be different. Decision, it but would be different. Um, yeah, I, I mean, everyone wants him to do an Iron Giant sequel, and he doesn't really want to do that. I and, hope oh, he never does an Iron no. Giant sequel. Yeah, he I did that. Pray to God, it never gets a sequel. But I love that movie. It's so good and so touching. It is. Yeah. 
But he did Ratatouille. That doesn't have a sequel. You know, that was so. amazing, too. That's a great standalone film. Right. It doesn't need a sequel. But that's kind of how he does it, though. Like, yeah. The first Incredibles is a great standalone film yeah. that, you know, has a great conclusion and ends on a really solid note and doesn't... I mean, it's been 14 Tells years. a wonderful message. You know, it didn't need a sequel as much as I wanted one, right? Um, so Midnight Pearl asks for us to introduce ourselves. So uh, that's Derek. That's Hi, I'm Derek. <laughs> I'm Ray. I'm Nicole. And I'm Chris. <laughs> okay. And for those who are not watching this live, uh, we do this live Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central at twitch.tv slash heroes podcasts. And you can chat with us live during the show. Mm -hmm. So you can always do that next week when we talk about Jurassic World. Absolutely. Yes. Um, all right. So let's, let's get into the story here a little bit. So um, the beginning <laughs> is kind of told... In flashbacks a little bit um, a little. because we're, we're learning about what happened at the the battle with the underminer um, <laughs> from from the perspective of Tony Reidinger of all people <laughs> <laughs> yeah I uh, I didn't expect that either <laughs> I'm just like oh, okay <laughs> I had flashbacks of Carrie the babysitter yes. you know when he's in being interrogated in the Jack Jack attack short mm. I'm just like oh this is a fun little refresher <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of funny how that tied back in, though, because nobody knew that Jack-Jack had powers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because, you know, the house blows up. They never really got the messages, I guess, or anything about his abilities. They just hear weird, weird phone calls, and then, like, they get there and the house blows up. Yep. <laughs> um, so how do you guys feel about the way it started off with it kind of being in flashbacks and he gets his mind wiped? And That was a clever way to reintroduce the characters to, like, oh, okay, supers are still illegal. Supers are still kind of viewed by the public in a certain way. Like, not everyone's okay with superheroes still being out there in the world. And, you know, when you've grown up your entire life knowing that superheroes are illegal, how do you how do you look at that situation to be like, there's a person in spandex standing in front of me, and then there's a giant drill coming out of the ground. I'd be freaking out, too. And it's like, I thought it was clever. Yeah. You know, I, want, I never thought about this before, but since superheroes are illegal in this world, do you think people, like, dress up in superhero costumes like we do? For Halloween? Probably Go to conventions? Not. It's probably It's right? probably against the law. Probably not. Right? That's kind yeah, of interesting. I never thought about that before. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Like you just accidentally well, you help like somebody while anarchist. you're in costume, and then they think you just help like an old lady across the street, and then you get put in jail. Right, because you're wearing <laughs> oh, a superhero costume, right? <laughs> <laughs> but then again, is that would that be a good way to get out of jail? Be like, I don't have any powers. I'm just going to this comic convention. They're like, yeah. right. Son. How do you prove you don't have any powers? You just don't do them. <laughs> that just proves you're not using them. That's like the yeah. witch trials where they're like, oh, well, you'll live if you float or whatever. Like yeah. that crap. Yeah. You basically die. We're going to set you on That's fire. And if you live, then we, we were right. You're right. You're right. You're a witch. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, this is taking a turn. No, but it was it was a fun fun opening action sequence because it, it started with flashbacks, but then it, then they after they mind wiped Tony's mind, mm -hmm. they immediately cut right back into the action from the Pars perspective. You get to see like Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl doing their thing, and then you get to see everyone else relegated to baby duty, and it was hysterical. Yes. I love that yes. nobody wants to watch Jack Jack because yes. they all want to be involved. They all want to be superheroes. <laughs> they love it. Do you want to be stuck babysitting a kid of when you could be not. saving the world? Of course oh, not. That'd be so much more. Especially fun. since at that point they assume Jack Jack is helpless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's true. true. <laughs> uh, we did get more of Frozone in the beginning of the movie and that throughout was the film. Good. Very happy about that. Yeah. I really like Frozone a lot. I mean, it is Samuel L. Jackson, so that makes most people probably biased. But um, I don't actually like Samuel I just, L. Jackson, I just but I do like Frozone. They handled his character way better in this film. Like, he felt like just an extended member of the family mm -hmm. instead of, like, yeah. the additional superhero yeah. who's the friend of right. Bob every now and then. It's mm -hmm. like, no, he's, like, the the cool uncle, no pun intended, <laughs> we but, didn't get uh, to actually see his wife though which I no, thought we were going to do I thought we were going to do I'm actually uh, really happy they never showed her because it still makes her this like ambiguous entity know, who's demanding where he's going all the time but we know what she looks like because they released official artwork of I still don't know what she looks like I haven't so, seen that image it's just super I wish weird. they would have put her in there yeah. right? Because I the, think the illusion isn't shattered for me I was it really hoping that she was a super too <laughs> It's fine. I was hoping she wouldn't be a super, oh, okay. so she can balance that relationship. Yeah. Also, I was kind of hoping they would like have a kid or Ooh, something. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I like the idea something. of her having powers and maybe like she can turn herself invisible, and so she's been there. She's there. Oh, <laughs> well, that's Violet. Violet, you know, that's true. But uh, 
That's kind of cute. No. Yeah. Oh, you're like oh. Vanisher. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right, all right. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. So the main premise of this film is that um, Winston wants to bring superheroes back into a positive light, and he is just a giant fanboy like we would all be if, like, mm-hmm. you know, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman were real. Um, and so he wants to focus and on the Elastigirl, list. though, mm-hmm. not not Mr. Incredible. Right. And I love that so much. I, too. I love that they decided to have this be so female heavy and so female driven mm-hmm. in the way that the stories were crafted because not only was it focused on her, how much of a sp- I can just go and say whatever. Yeah, yeah. So then like, <laughs> so then the, villain, the villain is also a female and I I mean I'm not saying that, you know, all the the villains should be females for but a Pixar film? Yeah. So I mean that to me is huge. I love that. And um, I really liked the how they um, explored having basically a you know stay at home father. The, with the, all these the, kids. the role reversal yeah, of the parent the too was really yeah. nice. The working mom and the stay at home dad who wasn't <laughs> always a stay at home dad, right? So who had to be thrown into that environment and really just kind of like just try his hardest to keep up and have no idea what he's doing, which is just like, and I love that both of them struggled throughout that. It wasn't just super easy for either of them, but that they grew and got better at it too. Like I like that. Um, since he couldn't sleep, he Mm -hmm. went downstairs and started working on the homework and figured it out so he could teach his son. And I like that. Uh, she worked so hard on the case and kept getting more and more pieces of it. So it, Mm -hmm. It's good to see character growth. Like yeah, for me, the biggest takeaway of the film was always it was always summed up by Edna herself when she was just like, the act of being a parent is in itself a heroic act. Yes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, yeah, you have Helen, you have Elastigirl going out being a literal superhero, but you have Bob staying home with the kids and also being a superhero to the children. Mm-hmm. Being, you know, the father who 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 helps with the homework, who does the dishes, who changes the diapers, and it's just like, also that Elastic Girl can have that steady career. And I'm like, oh wow, these are really good parallels stories being told. And so, like for me, that was the biggest, the biggest like well, uh, message being driven home by the movie. With that being said, I mean that I think that is why it's so huge to have that role reversal because. If you think about it, that's been Elastic Girl's life. Like she's been doing that. She's been taking care of the kids while, you know, even though she helps Bob, like he's out doing his thing more mm-hmm. often than not. And now to have those roles reversed and to an extreme is I think refreshing to watch. Plus, I mean, there's not enough like I, I think good dads just struggling to be real dads mm-hmm. in animation. I don't think that's a thing. But I feel like he complained about it a little too much. Well, but again, it's a, <laughs> it's a culture shock. And if he is the type of man that he is, very macho, very... I'm not saying that he would refuse to be that father figure like on a regular day, but right. he probably would. He probably would be like, oh, well, you got this. I don't need to be here and I then go off and do this thing. Yeah. And I think that he's thrown into this thing because he has to be. And then yeah. he comes around to me and he's like, okay, I have to accept this. I have to figure this out. Of course he's going to bitch about it. Yeah, I just feel like he was t- <laughs> more negative than he should have been. That's, that's within character, though, because in the first movie, he, he was kind of a jerk. He was secretive and hiding all the stuff from his wife. Mm-hmm. And it he doesn't realize that him hiding this whole other job makes him look like he's having an affair and it's, like, killing his that's wife. Right. So he's kind of... He's self-absorbed. Absolutely, yeah. he's self-absorbed. Not to mention, the story takes place days after mm-hmm. the first film, so it's not like he's gone through a major character arc right. since that first movie. Right. He's no. still, if any, he's still the exact same person from the first film, yeah. just days later, so like he would still have feelings like that. Like, two days ago, I saved the world, and now I'm changing diapers. He literally now, basically I love my that. children, <laughs> but it's like, this is slightly embarrassing, you know? But cause... keep in mind, they weren't allowed to be superheroes <laughs> right. for a long time, so it's all, not like he's just been doing this constantly for his job and he got fired. He kind of has been. You know, he's been secretly saving the day with Lucius, like, every Wednesday night, bowling night. <laughs> well, they listen to the radio. We don't know how often they actually got to do anything. Yeah, but, but like, they, 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 they help with burning buildings, like, once every other week or something, and, yeah, they're doing it in secret, but, like, to him, that's saving the day. He's still being I a guess hero. I mean more of, like, when they pick Elastigirl, when Winston mm-hmm. says that he wants Elastigirl, I feel like he's just, like, as... He, as little support as humanly possible yeah. in that situation. And that's what bothered me, because they got together 
because they're both supers, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's how, like, their wedding basically took place because they were both fighting the same crime, right? And they bump into each other on the roof when they're supposed to be at their own wedding, right, in the first movie. So the fact that he is so quick to dismiss that part of her life, that's what bothers me. Well, I think what he was assuming... What he was well, assuming okay, was I'm, that, I'm not disagreeing with what that. He, I think what he was assuming was, like, he wants all of us here to all be supers at the same time, and they're only picking a last girl. And if that's the case... Mm. Why are Lucius and I here? The no. reasoning behind it was good, though. The fact yeah. that like they had the numbers to back they it did. up, and it totally made sense that if they want to get the government on their side, you have to go with the one that causes the least collateral damage. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think you wanted all three of them there because they're the ones who are going to get their photos taken mm-hmm. in front of everybody, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, it's for the press, right? You yeah. know, even though Elastigirl is going to be the face. initial person. Marketing. But look at it from right. Bob's perspective. Exactly. He asks, he literally requests all of them to come to the, the tower at night, dressed in their full superhero mm-hmm. gear and everything. He's like, "We're going to make supers look good again, but right. we're only going to use your wife." But they and it's just like, if, and so to him, it's just like. Oh, that's just the that's just the beta <laughs> test, though, right? She's the initial one because they know she's the the least risk to cause collateral damage, right? So she's she's the gray launch of this program. And let's be honest here, he's the multimillionaire trying to do this, mm-hmm. and he wants to see his superheroes in their gear, to right? Succeed. Right. Well, so. <laughs> well, and if you're going to like a premiere for like Wonder Woman, I mean, she's going to be the center of attention, but that doesn't mean that you don't invite the rest of the cast. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. what I mean? you still want the supporting characters. Mm-hmm. Because they have to be there. Mm-hmm. And at the bigger picture, they do want to bring supers back onto the mainstream, be accepted, not be illegal. And so that was like their whole point. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I don't I don't even think it's that big of a deal that he was a little bit more negative about it. I don't think that he was necessarily dismissing that part of her life. I think a lot of it was just that the dynamic had changed. And immediately when the dynamic changed, he couldn't really like There was no that. grace period. It was it was immediate role reversal. Which and he would need somebody who was also a super in order for a relationship with him to work. Because like you were saying before, like he did have to keep a lot of things secret. Mm-hmm. And if he didn't have somebody that he could share those things with, then Yeah. I think that's well, that's a fair point. It's really difficult when your roles are reversed right away. You have years and years mm-hmm. of getting used to your specific roles. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're not just talking about gender roles, but we all take on roles within our relationship. Right. And if all of a sudden everything switched, mm-hmm. you might be kind of an ass about it. Yeah, especially but, since he was the breadwinner for, like, yeah, the entire yeah. first movie. He was, like, he's the one who had the 9-to-5 job, mm-hmm. and he then had the secret job on the side. So it's just like he was he was the provider mm-hmm. up to that point and then to be just the stay at home dad, it's But then he even dark. mentioned that too. Yeah. He even mentioned how well I'll you know, I'll go out and get a job. Mm-hmm. And then she tells him no, it's her time to to do this. Yeah. And that I think was hard for him too, and he didn't think it was gonna be a realistic thing. And then mm-hmm. this, you know, billionaire is like, Hey, have this house, have this car, have this money, right, have this life, by the way. Now you need to stay home with the kids. And mm-hmm. I think that was just a big culture shock for him. And honestly, I don't think he'd ever done it before. No, it was very so. apparent that he had no idea how to be a full-time yeah. parent, just a part-time one who takes care of the kids. Not after just for kids, kids, but for super children. Right, right. <laughs> so let's Scared. let's continue on to other parts. So, we yeah, get the, too bait, down. the bait and switch I was talking about earlier is hiring Bob Odenkirk. Because he is, for the last 10 years, he has played a sleazy villain type in every single role. So to hire him in a Pixar movie, and for film fans who know who he is, who've seen his work, like, immediately you think this is the mm-hmm. bad guy. Yeah. He's going to, like, this He's the too corporate happy businessman. And I, I, yeah, I, I like, went into the film thinking the corporate guy was going to be the, the, the main villain. But not for, not for like superficial reasons but it was just like oh maybe he's doing it because he has a crush on Elastigirl he wants to get closer to her for something like that like almost like a role reversal of the first film where like you had Buddy you know Syndrome who was the biggest fan of Incredible uh, Mr. Incredible but then now you have like this corporate guy who's like we're gonna focus on just Elastigirl and get Bob out of the picture and I can move it I was like that was my immediate thought, but then I thought as the movie went on, I'm like, okay, no, no, it's not him. That's not his his plan at all because, you know, that's what they didn't go with, of course. But I thought, oh, like you said, you know, the previous roles of this actor, he's done all these kind of sleazy roles before. This is what I expected of this kind of character, and they didn't do it. Yeah. I like that the person that did end up being the villain. Mm-hmm. I liked how she was introduced as kind of like this fun kind of easygoing Mm -hmm. super intelligent had a ton of like 
credentials to back up, you know, her abilities and then um, getting close to Elastigirl as kind of a friend. And then for that, the switch, the way that it happened and, and was revealed to be very clever. Yeah. I liked that it wasn't underhanded, you know, I what agree. I mean? or that they undermined what Elastigirl could do or think. I mean, Elastigirl figured it out. And it was just, she just didn't realize it, who it was and mm-hmm. that they were right there. Absolutely. And, you know, that's really cool for Katherine Keener because she yeah. has always played the good guy. And just within <laughs> the last year between Get Out and now Incredibles 2, she's a villain. She is a straight mm-hmm. up villain. And it's just neat to see her career go in that mm-hmm. direction. It's Which, always fun to be a villain. Yeah. What do you think of Screen Slaver? I hate that name, by the way. I think <laughs> yeah. it's the name's a little lazy, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's pretty on the nose. I, I didn't really have any other issues with the villain in general. I mean, it was fine. Um, it wasn't as unique as the first one, because the first one has all this right. backstory, because you're still learning about the characters, versus mm-hmm. this villain is really only a villain because, you know, uh, Winston wants to do this thing and she doesn't like it. Right. Well, but her reasoning was because, she, in her mind, if it wasn't for the supers and the fact that they didn't answer her dad's call, sure. her parents would be alive. Yeah, but it's it's more of like, how do I want to phrase this? So, if her brother doesn't do this one thing, then Screen Slaver never exists. Mm-hmm. Versus, right. you know, Syndrome wants to make everybody in the world a superhero just to kind of get back at Mr. Incredible for being a superhero, right? So Syndrome's is a little more worldwide than Screen Slaver because Screen mm-hmm. Screen Slaver's got an end game that's pretty simple, right? Once Winston fails, she's done. Yeah. Well, it's literally the opposite of the first movie. If you wanted to make everybody a super, and now the villain wants there to be no supers. It, right. Or not necessarily no supers. She just doesn't want the world to be so dependent on supers anymore. She doesn't want she them, doesn't them to be, be legal. Like, it's not yeah. like X-Men level, no right. mutants kind of thing. <laughs> no, but of she, does, she wants to make sure that that law is in the books forever. Right? And the, her reasoning for that, though, is just... It's it's a it's a little flimsy just because it's her parents her, her parents refused to go into a bunker. her dad did yeah her dad refused to go into their safe their safe, safe or room. their panic room because he wanted to call the superheroes and so for that she's going to blame all superheroes mm-hmm. who have ever existed like and that's... he on the other hand like it I thought it was really clever because it shows how one event can change the course of so many people's lives in different ways. Yes. And they took two completely different paths. So yes, on the surface, the motivation for both of them is pretty flimsy. But when you compare the two siblings to each other, the story is much more interesting. And maybe they should have focused on that a little bit maybe. more. And then the villain and well, both Winston and uh, Evelyn would have been a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. It just seems like what Winston wants to do is for the whole world, and Evelyn just has a very personal family vendetta kind of thing. Her parents died, and she I think that's just as strong of a motive. I mean, in real life, that's what we're all motivated by is what happened to us. We don't all think on a global scale. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to think on a global scale. I just meant that if you're comparing her to the to Syndrome in the first movie, right. I just didn't think her her reasoning was as strong. That's well, the, thing, all. the thing with Syndrome is like the reason what makes him such a compelling villain is that his motivation for doing what he's doing still ties into the everyday narrative of like the Parr family. Bob even has this wonderful monologue about it where it's like, if everyone's super, then no one's super. And that relates to Syndrome as well as the small scale stuff. Because he, he talks about Dash getting a ceremony for just moving to the next yeah. grade in his school. And I'm like, <laughs> that minor little bit of dialogue plays into the overarching theme of the film. The, the the main plot of the villain in this movie doesn't really relate to anything going on back at the home with Bob and the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's almost... Basically, Elastigirl is really there just kind of coincidentally. Mm-hmm. Like, it could have been any superhero involved. The fact that it's Elastigirl is not particularly relevant. And that's probably why the villain isn't as successful to the movie. I I felt that this was a really good i guess attempt at a villain like that they, they had a great idea but it just fell a little short it was like i like the villain yeah yeah villain. that's the thing i like the villain, the villain. i don't like right. the backstory we just didn't really get much so, of one i right. think that's the thing is like she wasn't in there 
very much to begin with. Um, the little bit that we did see of her, though, was all very kind of chummy. Yeah, absolutely. And getting to know and getting to butter up, you know, Elastigirl and the Supers and then her brother. And that to me is a little unfair. When do you think was the last time Elastigirl talked to another grown woman? woman? Yeah, I agree. A long time, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in chat, uh, Midnight Pearl had a pretty funny joke. We were talking about, uh, you know, c- kind of comparing it to X-Men. And she said that if Evelyn <laughs> is Magneto, then the next movie, Evelyn gets to be a good guy. And so that, <laughs> I'm okay with that, though, because I think that the character was interesting. I just I needed too. a little I bit wish more. I we had more. So I like that she just went to jail and she didn't die this like cruel death. So. <laughs> no case. Well, see, that's, 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 that's... Syndrome deserved it. He was a bad guy. And let's face it, like... 14 years ago, the entitled fan with toxic masculinity, like, pouring out of him wasn't really a thing. And now it's everywhere. Yeah. So Brad Bird, <laughs> like, he could see. more <laughs> relevant now than he was 14 he years ago. He had 20, 20 vision. <laughs> but, but I think it's really important that Evelyn lives because it proves why Winston was right. Yes. Right, because Elastigirl and Void are doing everything they possibly can to not let Evelyn die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, even though Elastigirl could very well have died in that situation, yes. and Evelyn didn't care. Speaking right? of which, I adored Boyd. I do too. Yeah, I just realized so it was cute. Sophia Bush. I know. Yeah. I know who it was. That's, she, Sophia that's Bush awesome. doesn't really have that memorable of a voice or anything. No, like, not really. Holly Hunter is very recognizable. Yeah, you can hear her yeah. a mile away. Craig yeah. T. Yeah. Nix, Nelson, yeah. very recognizable. Not really Sophia Bush, so I'm happy that she's doing stuff. because that mm-hmm. And her character was adorable. Cool. So yeah. great. I want to have like a like <laughs> Disney XD spinoff series with some of the side heroes, yes. the side supers. The point is all of us nerd people. I have a small issue with some of the side heroes. I didn't like all like of them. Like the Acid Reflux so guy? Oh, oh, so oh, with acid God. reflux? In that's most, weird. In <laughs> <first> movie, <laughs> what so was gross. so interesting about the superheroes was the fact that once they were like told to hang up the tights... They were like normal looking people. Half of the heroes in this movie, they're like hulked out people with massive forearms, and it's just uh, like one dude's a bird. One, guy. one dude's like, literally yeah. a bird. Wait, 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 I, like, I, how do you hide in public and live a normal life <laughs> outside of the tights? They, they don't though. Mess. See, that's the thing. They, they don't. I, I think that they did that very much on purpose. That in the in the golden age of heroes, which is like you know Gazer Beam and all of them, mm-hmm. they were what we think of as like superhero comic type people. But if they all go away. And only the people who feel like they have no other choice do it. You get more of the outsiders, mm. right? You get the people who already don't fit in. So they might as well not fit in in a positive way. Yeah. Right. So I actually, I thought that was very much on I purpose. liked it. Um, and I, I didn't like Acid Reflux guy though. No. No, <laughs> that was weird. It was so nasty. It was like, here's the line. And they were like, let's put this guy over here. But I, I like the conversation with the crusher guy about how, like uncrushing something. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what happens if you punch someone? Do you unpunch them? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, it's so good. <laughs> now, I will admit, the powers that they displayed in this movie were ridiculously clever. Like, they were. like Void was very well done, yeah. and the fight between her and Violet was mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite scenes of cool. the whole film. It was, it was really so nice. well, like, just... Corey was tight. Yeah. It was tight. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, or, actually, I told you, right after the film was done, my favorite fight scene out of the whole film oh. was the oh, yeah. Jack, Jack Jack and Raccoon fight scene. It was so okay. good. So the only reason why I have a problem with this is that was put in there for toys. Straight up toys. I don't it know. It doesn't Jack Jack matter. Jack matter. That is one of the best scenes I've ever <laughs> I seen. I buy one of those toys. <laughs> but here's, here's my problem with that. You better send me a snap like right after. <laughs> here's my Let's problem with it. that scene. My problem with that scene is that is one dumb raccoon. <laughs> I well, mean, they're not the smartest creatures. So. Raccoon, raccoons are fairly intelligent they, of the domestic world type animals. They can open doors and trash cans. They eat like, our food. This one they know where to live. Just like, decided he wanted to fight a baby. Okay, that could shoot lasers, catch on fire. Jack duplicate. Jack decided he wanted to fight the raccoon. It's true. The I'm raccoon just, decided to retaliate. Yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> most raccoons would run away when they noticed a human. Noticing a baby, maybe you ignore that. That's fine. I had a raccoon in my backyard that used to hang out the back door with my cats. Okay? But I feel like if one of my cats all of a sudden burst in the flames, the raccoon was leaving. (laughs) Well, I think that it was interesting because I I think I mentioned this too after we saw it, but I know it's a completely different, you know, um, oh God, I can't, movie house, whatever you want to call it. But Theater? No. 
What? Um, so, Genre? No. But the, oh, no, the way really that curious. it was drawn, <laughs> the way that they, they animated the raccoon was just like the squirrel from Ice Age. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. So I think that played into the characterization of it, even though I know they're Scrat. created by two Scrat different... Let's see, the, the, the no, squirrel has a goal. He wants that, that acorn. acorn so right. bad. What is the raccoon's raccoon? motivation? He, he wants, wants to, to kick the baby's ass. He wants to continue eating out of the trash can. The baby literally took the trash can away from him, which was like his buffet. It's like, you don't take a buffet away from a raccoon. And I, I, I understand that <laughs> sentiment. And in the initial fight, that's fine. But once there's like seven Jack Jacks and these on fire, and they're all shooting, shooting lasers. lasers, I'm like, you're done. Go somewhere else. There's but another house. Jack somewhere. Jack was also following him and chasing him. You, you know what's coming next, though, right? A short? The rematch. No, I was going to say the team of it's Jack <laughs> Jack and Sidekick <laughs> Raccoon. And well, like, they did Jack make Jack Jack and the Bandit or something. Oh, so God. you guys, you guys remember Rock'em Sock'em Robots? Yes. yes. So for those who don't remember, it was like a tabletop game where you each controlled a robot and you would punch each other until one of your heads would pop up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was who lost. Um, they actually have an official. Jack, Jack Jack versus Jack. the Raccoon. <laughs> Rock and Sock. They do? I don't think it's actual branded Rock and Sock and Robots, but it's in the Disney oh, store. Get this. It. It's at the Disney store right now. Yes. Um, and that's, that's going on my dining room table, thank I you. Don't know how to, I don't know how to feel dining about it. Table. It's going to sit there in the living room for people to look at and play with. Yes. Now, one thing we kind of skipped over was some of the political undertones in this movie that I thought were very poignant and timely. Uh, for example, the conversation between Helen and Bob about whether or not it's right or wrong to do something just because there's a law in place. Mm-hmm. And I think yes. that was a very interesting thing to uh, discuss in a mm-hmm. children's movie. Well, that <laughs> is incredibly relevant to it our is. current climate, and we're going to just leave it at that. Yeah, I, I just want to say that I really appreciated that they did that in a Pixar film. Pixar always tries to handle like legitimate issues, and they handle strong emotional things, and I appreciate that they don't talk down. Well, and so. even if you take the quote-unquote political side of that out, you can also just make it about, you know, people. Like, when you're talking to children and when you're teaching them what values to instill in them and what's important in life and what they need to know to grow and learn and survive in the world, one of the things that you need to know is that you have to question things. Just because somebody says something's wrong doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Just like when someone says something's right. Make same, it right. Yeah, same thing. And I think a lot of that is just like thinking for yourself and using your own judgment to decide what's right and wrong. So even if you don't think of it politically, even though that's absolutely relevant, you can think of it as a moral lesson almost. Yeah, and Pixar, if you're listening out there, this is why we, we hold you. you to such a high standard. Because <laughs> these are the types of things you give us. So we just expect more. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. Not wrong. Um, okay, so um, what else would you like to touch on then? We've kind of so- gone through a lot of stuff. I, the timeline for Incredibles is always a little fuzzy, and if you look in the first movie, when Bob's reading the newspaper, it says 1962, so there's a year attached to this, and uh, we talked about the other superheroes and newer characters being outsiders, and like, can we talk about how incredible Void looks? She looked like a character... Mm-hmm. No, she looked like a girl who works at your local mall or, you know, mm-hmm. she... A barista, yeah, like a... Yeah, yeah making you know, her coffee. She's someone you would bump into at the park or something. She is not a 1962 no. person. So right. neon blue hair. Right. She's like 1980s, like, punk rock. Yeah. Rock. She's an X-Men. Exactly. That's, I mean, you're not... You're right on In this world, yeah. Yeah. I, I, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's Nightcrawler or Pixie or... Or Blank. Her or powers blank. are basically... <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's true. She's Clarice Ferguson. That's it. Yeah. But I loved her design. And I, even some Me of the too. weirder characters, like the owl guy was weird, but it was an interesting design. They, I've never seen anything. Like like the owl, owl, different. The yes. owl guy reminded me of Mole from uh, the... <gasps> Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, from, I was trying to pick. Yeah, I was trying to pick. Oh, uh, Atlantis, the little yeah. French guy who was like digging in the dirt mm-hmm. all the time. He, I don't yeah. know why, but he reminded me so much of a that. The little whole bit? character. Thank you. Like, it was crazy. If I was anything, to it reminded me of like the Hollis Mason Owl Man from I, Watchmen. Oh, yes. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. You could definitely tell that they they borrowed some tropes from you know classic oh. comic booky stuff. Watchmen yeah. literally the entire story deals with the the out outlaw you know superhero community being you know mm-hmm. shunted out by the government, and so like that's like everything the Incredibles deals with. So yeah. why not pull 
from that resource, or at least be inspired by it. So is Jack Jack Dr. Manhattan then? Yes. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> a little bit. I, I, I had a theory like about Jack Jack. Jack Jack is the With the result kind of. Of, like, of like evolution taking its course. <laughs> when every other super was killed by Syndrome, he's the one gaining every power of every other super. Yeah, he's like Kirby. He just like sucks in all the in. idea so, that energy never dies. It just gets It just replaced gets replaced or repurposed, or repurposed yeah. by the universe. The universe is like trying to correct what happened to every other individual superhero. And it's just like this next generation needs that individual but they're not they're not being born fast enough so every power that was lost by an adult superhero is now shoved into this baby and, <laughs> and he's just bursting at the seams into so the baby. go ahead so I, was, I really want to see them jump ahead a few years and see what type of sibling jack jack is when you yeah know, he can talk and go to school and he still has you know dash and violet as his older siblings he seems like he's gonna have anger issues i'm just saying and then also made a comment that he could lose powers babies often have like yeah that's true more powers and they they wear off so that's a nice throwaway line for them to retcon it later and be like yeah. this is ridiculous and just get rid of a bunch of abilities but at the, <laughs> yeah at the, they can use that line to say well you know he didn't good for him or yeah, yeah well, we're just something. done drawing gummy jazz. that would be something to, oh interesting to explore if they so ever funny. made a third one would be like do heroes have their abilities forever or like every hero up to this point that we've known has never lived into old age no nope. Do they do they retain their abilities past a certain age, or, or do they do they wane do they him? wane with time? Oh my gosh, how great would that be if all of a sudden we jump ahead like 25, 35 years? Kingdom Come Incredibles. Well, and <laughs> Bob has lost his powers, and Elastigirl's in the stages of losing him, and it's just another thing for him to fight, and he he's, just, he's, he's not just so fighting depressing. he's not just fighting old age, <laughs> but he's, he's dealing with the fact that he has to finally hang up the tights for good. Yeah. See, well, in, in like, Kingdom, kids could be really successful. In Kingdom Come, Flash gets faster with age until he's just is a standing blur. So that could be Dash. Well, it's like well, yeah. it could be like a like a Fantastic Four like Future Foundation moment where like Jack Jack grows up to be like a Franklin Richards kind of character where like he's grown beyond the idea of superheroes and he's like fixing world problems. He's a god. He's now, now a god, and so it's like he's getting a complex, and so instead of just being a villain, they have to like rein him in before he becomes one. Mm -hmm. Well, because if you did Well, we just know. wrote Incredibles 3. You're right? welcome, Pixar. Pixar. <laughs> Hire us. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bird, give us a call. We'll talk. We're, we're waiting. Uh, uh, we're I will say this. Go. I never realized that Brad Bird voiced Edna. Uh, yeah, you can I know didn't until just now. Yeah. Until and I saw this paper and I was like, know, yes. Edna is one of my favorite fictional characters just That's ever. That's actually kind of a so. Pixar trope where like the director vo usually voices one of the best characters in the film. Like, the guy who directed uh, Up, he voices Doug. Yeah. Uh, the, the director of Finding Nemo does Crush the Turtle. Um, God, there's a few others, but, like, yeah, Brad Bird did Edna. Hmm. And they're usually always, like, the best side characters in the whole movie. It's not a Pixar film, but the director of Meet the Robinsons did Goob. Mm -hmm. Grown-up Goob, not kid Goob. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. Um, but I just appreciate it. I like Edna a lot. I'm glad she still had a role in this one, even though you know, it wasn't the same type of, of job for her. Oh, so. I loved it. Yeah. My one thing is I wish, and I'm glad they put Frozen in here and gave him like a bigger role, but I wish there was a lot more ethnic yeah. variation. Yeah. I, a lot more representation for other cultures. Well, I, I, if you noticed, a lot of the, the additional superheroes in the movie... They they all had like accents, or at least half of them yeah. had accents. So they could have been from other I mean, countries, other uh, like the, the, the Crusher the guy. Yeah, where they Russia. have all the different ambassadors. They Each one has almost like a superhero. representative superhero. With yeah, them. so that's nice. But it's it's again the whole you know you you told us that you had this now show us that you did mm -hmm. so absolutely. I, we're getting there. We're not there yet. <laughs> at least this movie passed the Bechdel test. You know it did. The what test? The, the Bechdel, Bechdel test. test. I don't know what Having a woman talk to another woman about anything that's not to do with a the boy. There you go. Okay. Now I it's, know. I learned something every day. It was developed by a, a Swedish doctor because she was tired of seeing women just talk to Which nobody. Which is 98% of any sort yeah. of film play. Is anything. there more than one woman? Mm -hmm. Do they talk to each other? Do is they? it about something other than a dude? Right. Like, those are the only three things. And surprisingly, that's really difficult for most films to do. Well, considering the fact that most films are basically written by men, directed by men, cast by men, created by men. Rated why would they by know? Men? <laughs> yeah. Most. That's why I'm a Trekkie. 
most Star Trek passes the Bechdel test. Not all of it. Not but... Into Darkness. That was the Into Darkness player. barely passes as a Star Trek movie, so <laughs> we're not going to get into yeah, that. The that's, one with, that's the one with uh, Benadryl Claritin as Yes, Khan. it is. That sounds like a terrible name. It, it sounds like an allergy medicine. Benedict <laughs> Cumberbatch. I mean, but, but, but Benedict Cumberbatch. There we go. Sorry. Is, wait, what? Doctor Strange. Oh, I know him. Yeah. What did you say? Benadryl Claritin. A lot of people make fun of his name. Is that serious? What? People make fun of his name a lot because it's ridiculous. I know, it's I know like, better. Yeah, this I is funny because like I love him as an actor. And oh yeah, no, I love. Him. <laughs> I don't know why you're great. making fun of him because I haven't seen that movie yet, so I don't know anything about it or who's in it. Ben I'm like, that is a stupid patch. name. <laughs> I've heard that one. I would know. Well, Claire, no, I quit. I hate, I quit. I hate Star Trek in the Darkness. Um, anyway, so ch- Chat was saying if they make a third one, um, they should do the time jump kind of like they did with Toy Story three. And mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. But I'm not sure that they will because they didn't do it for this big 14 year gap. Whereas like the first two Toy, Sto- Toy Stories like, were fairly close together. I am not sure if they should do another movie that's 30 seconds later because then it mm-hmm. turns into a ridiculous premise of. The, like the 24 but series. Just bad stuff continuously happening. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, <laughs> but can something tragic time. can't happen every hour of your life. Cool. When do you poop? Other like, than other than the Jack the Jack becoming a god slash super villain, <laughs> like, are there any other ideas or 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 uh, things that they should tackle if they make a third one? Yeah, they you should could... bring Lucius's wife <laughs> into you, the damn film. You could have a country try to weaponize its she supers. She's the greatest good. That could be interesting. Make it an international situation. Absolutely, that would be incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're gonna... Incredible. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're going to age them up, right? So if you're going to jump ahead ten years or something, where Dash and Violet in? are adults, do you they can have make their it, own family? You can make it more serious, right? Yeah. You can have it be a little bit darker. You can have it be especially because like... their fan, like their fans, are growing up, and mm-hmm. they, there's already a fourteen year gap. So most of us, I mean, hello, we're already getting old. Oh <laughs> yeah. God. And then, for it. I was in high school when the first one came out. Right. You know, you so. how long ago that was. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think you can age it up. And I don't think there has to be another 10, 12, 14 year gap for them to do it. I think they can do it within the next couple of years and still have it be... Do like like a, a ten later. years later kind yeah, of film exactly. where Dash is now late teens, Violet's in her early 20s, Jack-Jack is still, you know, he's, he's 10 years old now. Yeah, you could mm-hmm. easily do that. And you don't really have to worry about the voice actors because they're all the same from the first movie except for Dash. Violet was always voiced by an adult woman, for mm-hmm. example. And, of mm-hmm. course, you know, the, the parents are already adults, mm-hmm. you know. And aging up everybody would actually make the adult, the, all of the characters closer to the ages of the people who actually voice them. Oh, so. Holly Hunter. God love her. But, wow. Her voice sounds much older. Yeah, it round. does. You think so? I didn't notice. Uh, you didn't? I, I noticed. Well, clearly we have to see the movie again. <laughs> so we watch, we watch both of them. Back Darn. Back. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I think if they do a third one, they have to, they have to have that, that age up, move yeah. forward in the future. Yeah. Otherwise okay. it's going to be a huge flop. I mean, at Pixar, least move it forward it. a month. You can't do another 30 second gap. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it to be another be month though. I, I mean, I want, yeah, I want to go a bit further too. <laughs> Fair enough. Show us what the world's like with a super on every street corner. Or, or yeah, like, yeah. That can't be did, easy. Did, did, sin, did syndromes, you know, <laughs> uh, predictions come true of everyone's super now? Or is nobody really, you know, super anymore? It's still a small percentage of the population. Mm-hmm. Probably, yeah. But I think if you had another country try to weaponize their supers. Mm-hmm. Which they would. You know, and some countries would. probably would give it a shot. You know, could be very interesting. You have some characters that can... Sure you know, pick up boats or this walk through walls. This movie would or... occur, like, right in the middle of the Cold War. And even if they aged it 10 years from 1962 to 1972, it's still the Cold War. It's still the Cold War. So yes. that would be interesting. That's true. Now, we're, we're nearing our hour mark here. So is there any other parts of the film that you do want to touch on? I want to point out that there is a strobe light scene. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the we... The, no. Yeah, the movie okay. was tested for with doctors, and it was deemed safe. That's why the scenes in it. it but there are warnings, jarring. and if you are epileptic, maybe pass on it until you know you can watch it at home and dial back the contrast or something. There, there, there's a there. scene. She's in an apartment. 
I feel like if you're still more. listening at this point, you've seen the movie, though. Probably, yeah. So it's a little late for that. But I do want to say, so since, since it was tested by yes, doctors... Yes, I will boycott it if, if Lucius's wife is not <laughs> <laughs> I, Everything I've seen about the epilepsy stuff has been by people who don't actually get affected yeah. by it. So I'm a little concerned that it's not actually an issue because it was passed by all the doctors and I haven't seen anything by anybody who actually was impacted by it say something. So I'm wondering if we're making a problem where one doesn't actually exist just because there's a scene that kind of looks like it might. I don't know. It was it's, still it's jarring, jarring for me. Scene. I'm not epileptic, but I was still like, this is hurting my eyes to look at. There's I had plenty a of movies away a couple that, times. Yeah. There's plenty of movies like... that have jarring scenes yeah, I, that impact yeah. people physically. I mean, sure. people have gotten sick in movies before. I get sick. Yeah, I got sick like in that. AI. Cloverfield. But like, uh, but you don't, you don't <laughs> need. Into the same. end of the rainbow. Or yeah. But you don't need warnings in those movies for people because there's not an actual medical reason, right? So if doctors pass it and the production companies passed it yeah. and the only people that are mentioning it are people like us who don't actually have yeah, we're, not we're not doctors, we don't thank know god but it's just like so i just i don't want i don't want the movie to have a fake problem you right. know what i mean yeah. uh, i'm not saying the problem doesn't exist but from everything but it i've could read be a problem. let's not yeah, blow it out of proportion really yeah apples, exactly maybe. i don't know like there like it happens like there was an episode of uh, pokemon that was banned because it aired the porygon Por- Por- episode but, yeah i think that's what it was yeah um, you know, Which makes sense. <laughs> there's been those types of things have happened, right? So things can slip through. That happens. Um, but, you know, everything that I've seen written is written by people who are concerned for people that, with epilepsy, but nobody yeah. who actually has those types of conditions. So, you know, sure. we're not doctors. Mm-hmm. A lot of these journalists are not doctors. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, but uh, but yeah. So I do want to touch real quick on Elastigirl's costumes. Because sure. she got a new one, which was really Good. cool. But I was curious, which one is your favorite? I have a, I have a favorite. You like the red one? I like the original. Oh, the white one. The, 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 pink, the, the white and kind of the sparkly pink one. I like hers and Bob's original costumes. I actually best. like the edgier, like, like the gray one. and black one. Yeah. I like that one more than the red. I think the red's a little cheesy. I okay. So. <laughs> I like I like the idea of like a super family having similar outfits. But, like, when you have five people all wearing the exact same outfit, I'm like, I want a little more variety. <laughs> yeah. Like, if they, if it were, like, two people wearing the same outfit or something, that'd be okay because, you know, they're they're married or something. But, like, they're a group. I, want, I want, like, if they do a third one. It makes one, sense to me. If, if they do a third one, I want the outfits to be more individualized. Like, Dash has something that's more akin to his power set or Violet to have something more akin to her power set. Well, all of the suits were tailored. To fit their They were powers. tailored, but I want them to be designed. Edna is a designer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she would, like, tear you apart from that. Just so, so you're I'm a graphic designer, thank you. So? You're not a clothing designer. No, but Boom. I have designed my own superheroes in the past. So your favorite is Elastigirl's new one that she gets I from do like his company. Yes. Nicole? I honestly don't have a favorite. No? I think, mm-hmm. um, I, I will say that I don't like the white. Wow, okay. It's not. I just don't Sorry, like Derek. white. I don't know. It's, it's weird and then sparkle. It's hard to keep clean. Right. <laughs> Women can so have a bad relationship with white. We get True. it in like elementary, middle school. It's just, you know, it's a whole bleeding. thing. <laughs> just, it's a thing. <laughs> Which is your favorite? I like the gray one. Yeah, the, um, the new one. I will say that they changed the white <laughs> outfit in the original movie. <laughs> she is just... She's got her thigh high boots and nothing. There's no hose. There's nothing. In this one, she has a pair of gray leggings mm-hmm. on instead. So, oh, also modesty leggings. <laughs> she's a mom now. Uh, also, <laughs> yeah, I want to throw out how awesome it is that they were um, before the curve here because she people have been commenting why is you know mrs incredible like why is she designed like an instagram model why is she so <laughs> thick it's like this came out before instagram was a 2004 people. people come on <laughs> so i but she's I do like, always been thick i do like that why are instagram and I do models like shaped like elastigirl i like it i like it a lot well, my favorite is her old one. I don't like the red one because it's not her logo. It's her husband's logo. Yeah. yeah. Their yeah. family's logo. That's why I like the newer suit because it's her logo. It's an updated version of I her like old the suit. Looking... But see, the families aren't the Incredibles. It's the Pars. Mm-hmm. They're just called the Incredibles because he's Mr. Incredible. and that's They're kinda... all incredible, though. Uh, yeah, I just, I mean, she was her own hero before him. So it just kind of feels like... I guess that's true. Like, I'd like to see a suit for Dash where, like, because if he gets faster in the in the future or something, he's got, like, goggles now because, like, you really? need to be able to see. 
Well, the Flash doesn't cool. need goggles. No, Does it he doesn't. Matter? You're just thinking of... <laughs> I don't know. I like that he would be differentiated from yeah. the other speedsters. Violet is actually, like, her suit's Violet or something? I don't know. That'd be kind of really? cool. Contrary oh! Violet. Violet! I knew it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's go around and give our grade for the movie. It's a letter grade. Plus or minuses are totally fine. <laughs> Um, and we'll start with our Ryan stand-in, Chris, because <laughs> that's where you sat. So uh, I would give it an A minus. I give it a solid A. Mm-hmm. B plus. Whoa, it's harsh. I've only given one movie an A this year. What was it? Uh, Solo. Wow. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, I, I Solo might be my favorite Star Wars film. That's to be fair, she's surprising. not a Star Wars fan. No, okay, no, yeah. you, you Convers- have said that. Conversation for another time. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll table this one for later. Um, I'm going to give it an A, personally, because I, I loved it. I really yeah. did. I would give the original one an A, too. Oh, you know? I'd give that uh, one, like, an A+. Plus. That's like, an A+. Plus. I don't do A+. pluses. Okay. No one's getting above 100%. He's one class, of those. Right? He's yeah. one of that those one gets an A and yeah. a gold star. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three smiley faces for the first Incredibles. <laughs> um, Get out of here. All right, so that's going to be it for us. Let us know what you thought of the movie. Um, you can find us at Heroes Podcasts on Twitter and Facebook or HeroesPodcasts.com. Don't forget you can join us live Tuesday nights on Twitch. Uh, Chris, where can people find you? Uh, well, my sister and I, we run a cosplay page called Not the Wonder Twins. We are on Facebook and Instagram, so please give us a like. And I'm Nikki Mouse Cosplay. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And that's Nikki Mouse for Nikki Nicole. Mouse. Okay. Yes, Nikki Mouse. N-I-K-K-I Mouse. <laughs> Ray? I'm Siren Ray. Have been before. I'll continue to be later. That's convenient for people who want to find you. Yes. Okay. And I am the Star Trek dude on Twitter and Facebook, mainly Twitter. And that is going to be it for us, Screen Heroes and the Heroes Podcast Network. Next week, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Review. Review. (laughs) Not the whole movie, just the review of the movie. Yeah, we're not playing the movie. We're going to act it out. With, oh. with like puppets. Do I finally get a big dinosaur head? <laughs> no, I know. You get like one of those like like, like puppet hands with like the mouth on your Unless I'm going to be in the blow up dinosaur costume. Yes. I we, vote you. I've, I've worn one before. Dig yeah, out like your yeah, sexy yeah. gold bloom Our, button shirt. Yeah, yeah. You can be gold bloom. Yes. Uh, yeah. Everybody wants That's to be gold bloom. That's what the audience wants. All right. We'll see you later. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>